We are presenting today a work of the Puzzlebots Physical Coupling of Robot Swarms. The motivation of our work is from the army ants. Army ants, as you can see from the video, they can form bridges when they need to go across a gap, and they can also dynamically adjust the size of the bridge in response to uh, different gap sizes. As you may see, the ants are able to form a droplet and help each other to cross this gap. In this paper, we present the Puzzlebot's swarm system. Our goal for this robot is that they can physically couple with each other and to form functional structures, for example, like bridges that can cross gaps, while also maintaining individual mobility so that they can move individually around the environment by themselves and perform tasks. Here we present uh, the design of the puzzle bot. Uh, on the left, you may see a picture of the robot. So the body length of the robot is five centimeters. Um, each of these gray balls are the motion trackers for the Wicon system. Uh, the Wicon indoor localization system will be able to track each individual robot and send the pulses to the central computer. On the right, you can see a top view of the circuit board. So the red uh, box here is the Wi-Fi module. So the Wi-Fi module connects a robot to the same Wi-Fi network as the Wicon system and the central computer. The central computer will be able to communicate with the robot and send velocity commands for the robot to execute. Uh, the orange ones are the program pins for the computer to load programs to the robot. So this robot has onboard power, onboard actuation, and onboard computation. However, it does not have uh, onboard sensing. So the sensing relies on the Vicon system for the feedback of the pulses of the robot. Here we show the bottom view of the circuit board. We can see here we have a microcontroller unit, two DC motors that are controlled by a dual H bridge motor driver. Uh, we have a CR2 battery of 3.3 volts. Uh, and we also have an oscillator that uh, Send signal to the microcontroller unit. Here we show two views of the robot design. So on the left hand side is the structure of the coupling mechanism. Uh, e on each side of the robot we have two knobs. Uh, and on each of the knobs we have two hooks on the top and the bottom. And there is also two holes uh, next to the knobs. So the mechanism works that the robot is able to insert its knobs into the holes of its neighboring robot. We will be introducing this in the next slide. On the right hand side, uh, we have an exploded view of the robot. Apart from the electronics we introduced in the previous slide, uh, we have a, double redu a set of double reduction gears. Uh, they also serve as wheels for the robot. So the gears as wheels helps to climb onto the platform and it also increases the friction between the robot and the platform ground. Here we show the coupling mechanism of the robot. So on the left video, uh, this is showing that when two robots are aligned and on a flat surface, they will be able to freely insert the knobs into the holes of the neighboring robot without any, theoretically without any additional force. 
Uh, on the right hand side, we're showing that when one of the robot, for example, the purple robot, is going towards a gap, and when the robot reaches the gap, it will tilt with gravity, and when it tilts, the hooks will be able to hold the robot in place, and this will help the robot to form a bridge across the gap. Here we are characterizing the coupling knobs. So one of the crucial parameters in designing the knobs and hooks is the width of the hook showing in this picture. For example, on the left hand side, we are showing a width of one millimeter hook. We see that when the robot tilts with gravity, the hook are able to block the movement of the robot body. However, uh, if the hook is too wide, for example, two millimeter in this case, uh, when the robot tilts with gravity, it is not able to hold the robot in place. And it only relies on the friction between the surfaces of the hook and the hole to hold the robot in place. However, this is not as strong as a pure, as the one on the left. Uh, another parameter uh, that influences the performance of this gap crossing behavior uh, is the angle we are showing here on the right hand side. That uh, when the robots tilt with gravity, as shown here, uh, there is an angle between the horizontal line and the robot body. We measure this angle and plot it with respect to the width of the hook, we may see that uh, in this setting, it performs the best when the hook width is 1.5 millimeter. So this means it has the least height drop when the robot is trying to cross a gap. And this will give us a better performance when it actually cross a gap. And we will be showing the results later on. Swarm coupling behaviors. With the motor we introduced before, we are able to control the rotational speed of each of the motor by giving different uh, PWM control signals. We measure, we model our control input as single integrator dynamics. So each of the uh, control input to the robot will be translated. Uh, with a differential drive model into the actual motor speed uh, on the robot. Uh, the robot coupling behavior is done as 1D rendezvous, that each of the robot move towards the centroid of the whole swarm. And the decoupling behavior is modeled as an anti-rendezvous behavior. Each of the robot will move away from the centroid of the swarm. Here we show a demo of the robot initially decoupled. They are able to couple with each other on one side of the platform and form a chain. And this whole assembly will be able to move across the gap and then decouple and then move to individual goals on the other platform. There are various parameters that influences the performance of the scap crossing behavior. For example, here we are showing the result of different heading angles. For example, the left is the result for degree zero and on the right is 30 degree heading angle. So we may see that the 30 degree heading angle one is able to cross this gap. So this is mainly because that by having a, a heading angle difference, the robot is longer on the diagonal so that it's able to cross a larger gap size. The height difference between platforms also influences the behavior. In the platform of the video on the right hand side, the platform on the right is slightly higher than the platform on the left. 
So as we mentioned before that there is a height drop when the robot assembly moves towards a gap. So with having a height difference, the robot is able to cross a larger gap size. So here we are showing the result of a platform height difference with 0 mm and 6 mm. Here we show the quantitative result of our experiment. Uh, the first figure shows the success rate of the experiment under different heading angles. You may see that heading angles around 20 and 30 degrees uh, has higher success rate. This is because the robot is longer on this diagonal. The second figure shows the maximum gap size that the robot are able to cross versus the number of robots. We may see that as the height difference uh, increases, the gap, the maximum gap size the robot can cross uh, increases. Uh, this is because of the height drop we mentioned previously. And uh, you might notice that w with one robot, the uh, height with larger height difference, the success, the gap size it can cross is zero. This is because when the height difference is large, when one robot go across a gap, that it might uh, flip so that it's not counted as a successful crossing. On the third figure, we present the ratio of the maximum gap size with respect to the length of the whole assembly versus the number of robots. By the length of the whole assembly, we mean the robot number multiplied by the body length. So this is the length of the whole uh, chain structure it formed. So we may see that this ratio drops uh, with higher a larger number of robots, more than three. This is because that when uh, the gap sizes increases, the major problem that is preventing the robots from uh, going through is actually the height difference. So uh, this does not help with by increasing the number of robots because the height drop of the assembly does not change just by adding more number of robots. That is all, thank you. We will be open sourcing our hardware and software on the project webpage uh, on GitHub, so you may check it out if you find our work interesting. Thank you.